Hello and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and joining me on the sofa today are Lou Huff, Heather Steele and Rebecca Hull. Welcome ladies. We've got a brand new fashion segment for you today. Lou and I are going to be showing you how to style five pieces in five different ways. So stay tuned for that. Plus I'm going to be talking skincare with the founder of brand Omoravitsa. So something to look forward to. But first we're going to be chatting about teachers because apparently half of Brits claim they owe everything to an inspirational teacher. Uh, one in 10 said the majority of their teachers were ineffective. Rude. Um, but yeah, everybody else, half of Brits, think that they have one who really changed their life. So I want to know, did any of you? I definitely did. I think there's maybe two that had a, like, have a real, really, like a real soft spot in my heart. I, like, I, I, there was one, my, one of my maths teachers in particular, I remember, um, like I, I found maths really, really difficult, but he always was there encouraging me and doing everything that he could to sort of um, help me understand it better. And I don't know, it just, it really left an impact on me. Would you go as far as to say that you owe everything to them? <laughs> Not everything, um, but certainly a, a lot, definitely. Yeah, I think an, a teacher can have a really big impact on your life in those years where you are to, you know, becoming yourself and your personality and your morals and everything you're learning. And I think, you know, they can, you can take so much from them. I agree. Becky? I mean, I wouldn't say anyone's sort of, I'm sorry to my teachers, but no one has completely <laughs> sort of changed my life. But I think, like Lou said, there's always one that sticks out. And mine was an English teacher called Miss Kashmiri. And she was, <laughs> shut <Sally>. up. Yeah. <laughs> and she was, yeah, really sort of beneficial in guiding me and teaching me how to do writing. So I, she is someone I will always remember. But I think generally, teachers aside, there's always sort of people throughout your life that you can not owe everything to, but there's special people you feel have guided you for sure. What do you think makes an inspirational teacher? So is it somebody who, it, who is calm and patient and really helps you understand something? Or is it somebody... So mine, for example, was a lady, Mrs. Neistry, Sandra Neistry, if you're out there. <laughs> and she was the scariest lady in the whole world. She was a French teacher. Um, terribly English, but, but a French teacher. And she, she was so scary, but with the most wicked sense of humour. And she was just... She kind of, you know, taught us all into submission. But she was so brilliant because she was so strict and so scary. A major yeah. 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 So, I don't know, yeah. Heather, what do, you, do you think there's, like, a way to inspire people? Or can it just be individual I, I yeah it probably depends on exactly who the teachers are my French teacher was also one of my favorite ones but mm. yeah she was French and she was very stern but also like the loveliest person as well so she could definitely flip the two so yeah. she had the you know the balance. could put the fear of mm. God in you if she needed to which is good because you need that push which you need because you don't want to be able to walk over your exactly. teacher yeah. Yeah, yeah especially at that age yeah, yeah. you'd yeah. be a bit scared you, you? you'd always do your homework for her yeah. but also yeah she was really kind and actually a couple of years ago when I was moving house I found um, a card that she gave me when I left school because she's also our head of sick form and it just said all these amazing lovely things like yeah. she was always trying to empower people and make them feel more yeah. confident mm -hmm. and she just wrote the loveliest card shed a little tear oh, reading it because really? um, I'd forgotten that she had yeah, said those yeah. things and it gave me a little bit of a boost even just reading it back a few years ago so yeah, yeah. I think firm but fair inspiring you to, to kind of give you that confidence yeah. if you're struggling to learn something and make you believe that you can and when you do and sort of just taking you on that process mm. really. also Heather that's really interesting because I reckon that's probably what you kind of saw in that feedback about a younger you yeah qualities that you hadn't necessarily thought about and you know you're getting really regular feedback when you're at school about yes. you and the type yeah. of person you are which you don't necessarily get in the real world no. so True. that's probably maybe Important. we should all refer back to yeah. our yeah to our report yeah. oh god okay. <laughs> yeah, <or not. laughs> um, exactly um all right we're going to move on and talk about fashion um princess diana and jerry Halliwell have been named as two of the people with the most influential style from the last four decades i think in particular jerry's union jack dress was cited as maybe influential is not the right word iconic iconic, iconic is going for. Um, <laughs> and so that got us thinking about our most iconic fashion moments or not ours not like what we yeah. did, but <laughs> the, the moments in um, history that were the most iconic for us Lou you had a particular favorite so yeah mine for me is Sienna Miller of the 2000s era she for me invented and created that boho chic and was the queen of it. And literally, when I would see her in magazines, I would cut it out. I had notebooks <laughs> of Sienna. I put on my wall. I just thought she was so cool. And she had that just really effortless look that it was just 
I just thought she was amazing. She was and still still has the most incredible style. She's not as obviously as Boho now, but that for me was a real moment where I think she was like the pinnacle. Yeah. We've got a picture of her at Glastonbury, one of her early Glastonbury visits yeah. that you cited as your like Exactly. One. And and I can literally see so many of her outfits. She had those really big, chunky um His belts. Like, hipster belts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ugg boots and rolled just made down. It work. Just made yeah. It work. Yeah. 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 And, like, her top. and her and Jude were like oh, king of queen. The yeah. dream. No. It's actually quite an Isabel Morant look. Yeah, really. Yeah. Which, yeah, reinvented in a slight. It's a bit less shabby chic. Yeah, these yeah days, exactly. More, more chic. Um, okay, we also put um, Liz Hurley in the Versace. I can't yeah. believe that didn't make the cut. Yeah, actually, actually oh, that's with the so big, true. the big gold. Um, yeah. What are they called? Safety, Safety pins, pins. Yeah. down the side of the dress. Oh, um, and also, obviously, J Lo in the green plunge. Oh, what was it? I think it's Dolce and Gabbana. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I mean that dress. Oh, I could still wear it. I yeah, like of that. Can. Oh, I don't think you're supposed to like it. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> it's you're like it. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's just iconic. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was so, I don't know what the year it was. The like, high yeah. 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 It's just so of the moment, isn't it? Like, it's a vibe. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a vibe. vibe. It's a vibe. I mean, she also looks exactly the same now. I know. She has not aged. I saw I saw a trailer for Hustlers, which is a film coming out next month where she's in it and she's pole dancing in the trailer and her body is still she's the next level. I know. Did you she's see what 50. she wore to her 50th birthday yeah. party? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's incredible. Unbelievable. Have Love an Instagram her. stalk, actually. Both her and A-Rod have, have good behind-the-scenes J-Lo content. <laughs> um, Princess Diana obviously topped the list as the most influential, and we were chatting before about how her not, it was more her off-duty look that seems to be kind of capturing the moment now, isn't yeah. it? I have to say, when you scroll through pictures of Diana, she did a white shirt tuck like no yeah. other. Yeah. I mean, she was cool. Like, all her, and she wore really nice sweaters. She definitely... And not just sweaters, sweatshirts. Sweat sweatshirts, yeah. yeah. That's she, amazing. Yeah. Like, she did low-key like no other. Yeah. That, yeah, it's so true. Heather, that cycling shorts look, yeah. right? That is, yeah. That is so hot. And the big off, dad trainers. Off duty yeah. mum. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. She looked great. Right. I she know. I think, well, I was about to say we should all be taking style <laughs> cues from her. I think everybody is. But yeah. long may it continue, I think. Um, okay, we're going to talk more about fashion now. Socks are a new fashion statement, supposedly. Um, I think this means... Interesting creative socks. We got sent a really cool pair, not one pair, two pairs, <laughs> yeah. pair, um, last week that say uh, they're tied air and they say don't trip on them. Like yeah. one foot says don't, the other foot says trip <laughs> from Mother Denim. And this is definitely a trend. There's a lot of quirky socks out there. How do we feel about it? Oh, I love a quirky sock. I mean, not ones with like faces on for obvious reasons, Why? but... Because I just, I, I mean, for the home, maybe, but not for, like, work. There's a line. Okay. There's a line. But I am very partial to, like, glittery socks yep. with a converse or even with, you know, like you said earlier, a heel. Or ones that are sort of, like, meshy with little spots yes. on or yeah. something yeah. like that. Cos like, I'm into do those that. very well. Cos do that and, uh, and other stories. Mm. Sky um, brands. Yeah. So I'd say mm. I, I am into a funky sock. Yeah, mm. why not? Heather? Yeah, when I'm wearing trousers, which doesn't happen that often, but when I do, yeah, a nice sort of black but glittery sock yeah. in between, I think. A bit you know, Jon Snow reading the news, like a hint of soft. <laughs> For a second, yeah. I went to Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. Jon Snow. Okay. I like that. Lou? Yeah, I agree. I like those ones. I think it's the more sort of those big, chunky, almost like sportswear socks that are being worn as right. day socks or like, you know, with Birkenstocks, with sandals, <laughs> kind of layering up in the sort of less conventional way, I guess. Um, you like that or you don't like that? I I can appreciate it. I think on the right person, it yeah. can look cool. I yeah. agree. But um, I'm not sure it's your sort of, it's an average day-to-day -day look that works for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a look I feel that comes back year and year again, doesn't it? <laughs> Sophie Turner um, stepped out wearing a pair with Birkenstocks and some very short yeah. shorts this week. You just need to have your legs out, which yeah. not, yeah. and like a, quite a lot of leg out. Yeah. And that's not a look for everybody, is no. it? Definitely not um, for me. Also on this list was um, animal print socks. Yeah, I can get on board with those. And, yeah. and glitter, Becky, as you referenced. Yeah, I really like glittery socks with a velvet heel yeah. at Christmas. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Great look. Definitely. Yeah, we'll Love that. Yeah. All right. Maybe we should do a roundup of socks. We should. Come to share that soon. <laughs> um, okay, finally, we're going to talk about the controversial fashion trends of the summer. We were at a feature that has gone live on the site today about everything from Bermuda shorts, heeled flip-flops, miniature bags, all the trends that this summer have, have raised some eyebrows, been all over Instagram. <laughs> um, so... I want to know, which would you try? Which do you hate? The one that I'm least keen on is the short-sleeved, boxy dad shirt. Um, I, can, I can appreciate why the fashion set wear it. I think they look cool. It's that sort of Prada runway vibe. But for me, it could, the outfits could look so much better. But when we were talking about it, we were saying it's not really about 
trying to look your best, it's kind of adding a bit of an edge to your look mm. or making it sort of slightly controversial. We saw a lot of that at, at um, uh, Copenhagen Fashion mm. Week last week. So I, I think there's definitely, you know, the, the ugly trainer, there's big dad trainers, there's a, a shift in that sort of attractive fashion at the moment. Um, mm. What do you guys think? I'm really enjoying the dad shirts and the dad sandals, like wearing some oh, myself I love right the dad now. Yeah. Oh, but are yeah, they the tether um, ones? They are, they're yeah. very cool. And yeah. they're um, waterproof as well, so I can go Handy. swimming in Brighton you, Beach without getting so my feet sore on the pebbles. That's actually a real plus. Yeah, it is, it is. Like yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so yeah, I'm, these, I do go walking a lot, so I can actually use them yeah. for both. But yeah, I don't know, I quite like wearing like a sort of floral dress with some big, chunky, ugly yeah. shoes. Mm. I, I don't know, for whatever reason, years ago, I'd have looked and been like, that looks horrid, but yeah. <laughs> I'm quite liking it. It totally works, and, and we yeah. were saying it's real that really that balance, and mm. kind of which one came first? Was it that there's, you know, a re real sort of feminine, big, puffy mm -hmm. dresses, yeah. and then there's also these kind of masculine, uh, Ugly, I mean, yeah. you know, tra we, trainers. We, we kind of deduced that the, the, the kind of overriding theme of summer, summer so spring, summer 19 was to kind of uglify <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. clothes. It wasn't even about making them more dressed down. No, it was about exactly. making them look effortless by adding something really unexpected, mm. yeah. like a chunky trainer or a bucket hat. That was the other one. Well, I don't like that. those. No? Yeah. I couldn't, I just, it's not for me. I couldn't pull off a bucket hat. I also have to say, I couldn't pull off a Bermuda short. <laughs> I've always, I mean, I'd love to, but I feel like that is a certain look. Would I you think, agree? Well, I bought a pair, which I've worn on the show, actually, and you have to wear them with a heel. Mm. I did wear okay. them with, bas with um, trainers, and I, re I felt like a basketball player. <laughs> like, that's, that's what I look like. Um, but I think, I think you could absolutely pull them yeah, off. And we agreed. talked about all the different ways of styling them, didn't we? Yeah, and we were saying, actually, it's such a nice piece to be able to wear. Obviously, summer's now coming to an end, although it's going to be heatwave next week. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a nice piece to be able to wear to the office. If you don't want to do that sort of boho summer look, mm -hmm. then to wear something that's a little bit more tailored and structured, but still kind of floaty and breezy mm -hmm. and a bit more relaxed, but still feel like you, you've got a bit of polish to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, some other trends, the miniature handbag. You said I might as well wear it as a bracelet. <laughs> might as well wear it as a bracelet, but I just am obsessed with anything dinky. <laughs> dinky yeah. So um, I love it, but it's, it's, it's not a bag. Uh, yes, yeah, for those who have haven't that. seen, we're talking about the Jacquemus miniature yeah. bag, which I mean, seriously. Like it literally it's, serves no purpose. Can you fit a lipstick it? and a credit card in? Maybe Probably a credit card. Oh. Maybe an earring. Yeah, now that's yeah, tricky. Like that. <laughs> an earring. Yeah, a coin. A coin. Yeah. But it's not about yeah, that. Yeah. It's not about that. Um, and also the giant hat we have to give a shout out to. <laughs> also a Jacquemus trend, yes. actually. Yeah. Um, but I think we came to the conclusion that was more of an Insta thing. It looks good in photos in real life. Yeah. I'd like to somebody fighting their big hat. Walking through Gatwick. I've arrived. It's for the photos. Only. Yeah. I agree. Um, all right, that's just about all we've got time for. More fashion next. Lou and I are going to be bringing you a brand new style segment. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Lou Huff. I'm head of fashion and creative at Sherlux, and today I'm going to talk you through some of my favourite and key pieces within my wardrobe. Number one would be a very classic boyfriend shirt. When I'm getting ready, I wanna wear pieces that make me feel good. They enhance my style, they don't take over my look. I couldn't talk about my wardrobe favorites without talking about this. So any opportunity I have to really dress up, I would wear this. The absolute basic essential to my wardrobe would be denim. I counted, I've got 25 pairs. This just with t-shirt and jeans, pair of boots, my bag good to go. Like the rest of my style, I tend to keep my accessories quite minimal, um, but if I was going for a jazz accessory, I've got this hair clip, which is probably so on me, but um, I just think it adds a little something to a look. On days when you've got nothing to wear and you want to wear, wear something pretty boring, these are my go-to. When it comes to our wardrobes, a little can go a long way, but if you're in need of a bit of inspo to make the, your favourite pieces work harder, we are here to help. We tell Charlotte with taking five pieces and creating five different outfits out of them, and here's how she got on.
So when we first came up with this concept, five pieces, five outfits, I was skeptical, <laughs> but you have proved otherwise. Well, so I think we did 10 by 10 for YouTube a few months ago, um, at, which you can still see on the site. And it's even then we were surprised that we thought the 10 outfits would yeah. be impossible out of 10 pieces. But it was that there were so many more that we could have kept going, like 12, 15. And actually here, what we what we established is had the dress been a skirt, yeah. that could have easily been a sick because you could have added the white blouse to the yeah. skirt. So actually the possibilities are, are really endless. Exactly, and the, the real thing is you just need to have those key different pieces yeah. that work in so many different ways and then you can build out all these outfits. And that is just saving grace for so many people who don't know what to wear in the morning, yeah. they don't want to have a big bulky wardrobe, so let's start with the pieces. Yes, definitely. Okay, number one, so, white blouse. Yeah, let's just kind of caveat all of this by saying all of these are kind of substitutable with, Completely. with other things. So, Completely. so it obviously helps have a bit of a neutral color palette yeah. because that way everything goes together. But obviously you can see with the dress, um, it doesn't all have to be no. one, one kind of sleek color. Um, so kind of any blouse, I guess, technically works um, works with this. But yeah, white obviously is gonna serve serve you well, as you well know. Um, and this is a really pretty one from Sarah. Do you have this? No, but oh, it probably we've talked about it before, probably but you could. probably should. Um, and yeah, I love the little detail um, up here. Maybe you've got a mango one like yeah, that. I do, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Um, and yeah, just infinitely useful. A white a white blouse. You can wear it with blue denim as you are today. Yeah, it's you so know. so easy. Um, yeah, and I really like adding something like that to. We'll, we'll look at the cream trousers in a minute, but doing a kind of head to toe neutral look because yeah. that's a really effortless way to do sleek um, without trying okay. very hard. And also, sorry, um, as we kind of head into that transi transitional time of the year. That way, um, you can kind of nod to something. You don't feel too wintry, but you'll okay. cover it up. Great. And this one is Zara, and it was twenty five ninety nine. Great. Um, okay, so, so then you styled that then first look with these amazing yes. white trousers, which so I am obsessed they're with. They're not actually, they really look like denim, but they're not. They oh. are, they're a cotton. Yeah, do you remember? Okay, yeah. I know. I mean, they're, they're quite, they're like denim. Yeah, they are. Um, they're, they're probably a little long on me. I okay. think um, if I were to, yeah, if I were to be holding onto them, I would be shorting them an inch. But um, actually, I quite like that culotte look, and you yeah. could add a higher heel than I wore in the video, and that would, um, that would kind of elevate them slightly. Um, the key to, the kind of the whole thing really is the fact that this came with a belt so that okay. was a kind of sneaky extra i suppose it's sort of a sick piece yeah. but a sneaky extra addition because obviously having seen the video people will know we then use yeah. the belt in kind of myriad other ways and yeah that was that was really helpful um again to show that if you just got that one accessory then you can mm -hmm. kind of mix things up in lots of different ways as yeah well. and this obviously is quite a sort of on-trend piece you've got almost like that um paper bag waist, mm -hmm. very wide leg, but again, you could you could kind of swap that out for just a simple white cream culotte, yeah. add your own belt exactly. as well. Exactly right, yeah. If, if if a wide leg sort of denim trouser yeah. isn't for you, then then yeah, something a bit more um, tailored could work. Okay, perfect, I absolutely love those. And again, they are from Zara and they were 49.99. A lot of Zara in there. There is. Mix. Okay, next we've got a pinstripe blazer, black pinstripe, double breasted. Mm -hmm. um, again, such a key wardrobe staple. Yeah. So, how do you style this one? Um, so this obviously we the first way was by itself okay. over the jeans. I love a blazer with nothing underneath. Yeah, um, so and nice. this one, you know how some they don't button up correctly, so you've got to like add a safety pin. This one I can confirm is perfect okay. for for um, the no top look because it yeah it kind of covers you in all the right places. And um, and then subsequently we styled it over the dress as well. Okay. So really versatile and just kind of going back to where, like when starting to kind of think about the key pieces involved in something like this, a blazer is just such an obvious choice yeah. that's kind of the thing that we started with because you can base i mean you can wear a blazer over yeah. anything and um and yet yeah, double breasted slightly oversized that's going to work with everything as well okay and do you think those elements are key go double breasted go over i think so because if you've got something that's a bit more slim fitting you're not going to be able to wear it for example yeah up with nothing underneath yeah. or you know it's got a slightly more this is this works for casual or you know casual yeah. because it's slightly oversized but also it's smart it's amazing yeah. so it's smart enough so it does both okay amazing next we've got a jumper in the video you actually styled this with a big black mm -hmm. jumper which we are obsessed with yeah um but we haven't got them with us today, so we've got this pink one as well. Because the point is, you can kind of add any jumper, can't yeah. you? So it doesn't really matter. Like, obviously, yeah, there's the amazing black one in the video. We've got a, a different black one coming up on screen. All the jumper options available for you today. Um, but this um, this pink one, again, if you wanted something a bit more um, summery, yeah. then, then go for a pastel. And this really does work with everything. If you've got a neutral trouser, yeah. great, it goes over Love that. that with that. Yeah, me too. Really pretty colours um, and a floral dress as well. So a slightly oversized knit is going to, you know, Completely. And also depending on your shirt, for example, if this one was like what I'm wearing today, then having like a big collar over the front, oh, 
exactly. Got my hair cool. oh. um, is another look. So as you said, there are yeah. so many more looks almost that you could have created. Exactly. And I don't know how much this is cheating in terms of a whole other look, but obviously what we didn't do was add like a jumper to the trousers and then add the blazer. Yeah. Or the blouse to the trousers and then a blazer. Like yeah. you can kind of continue to build those layering pieces. Yeah. And the outfit will still look different. Um, but it's also using the same exactly. things. I mean, this is just perfect for if you're like city break packing, mm -hmm. if you're going away, you don't have loads of space, just on a carry on. Yeah. Just thinking about, rather than thinking about individual outfits, totally. it's more about those key pieces and styling them so differently. And do a try on, like do the exercise that we just did where you yeah. take five things and see how many outfits you can make just out of those and yeah. a few key accessories. Okay, finally, we've got this dress, which you again said could have been a swap that for a skirt. Could have been a skirt, could be any floral dress. Um, yeah, it, if you're just layering it with a jumper or a blazer, yeah. obviously um, anything kind of of the silk works. I love this one because of the puff sleeves. I think it's got a nice elasticated yeah. um, hem there so you can kind of puff them up a little bit. Obviously I'm into uh, <laughs> people's shoulders right now. Um, um, and yeah, you can. It's also got a slight seam here, which means that um, you can add the belt really nicely, and yeah. that is still going to fall um, in a, in the right silhouette. Um, and then yeah, we added a blazer, added the jumper, and um, the key with the jumper over something like this that that is cinched at the waist is to add a belt and then tuck the jumper under the, the belt. Top. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise um, it's going to hang and it's it's going to. Cut it's not that flattering. Funny. Yeah, it's yeah. not that flattering. Um, but yeah, it can. It, it's literally so versatile. I think people look at something like that and they think, oh, it's busy. It's it's for yeah. how can I wear it? But there are just so many ways. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. I, I think also you're right. It's the belt as well that can really yeah. transform these outfits and kind of thinking about those tiny little tight styling mm -hmm. tweaks, where you tuck it, where you roll yeah. it, where something sits that can really make a difference. Those looks. And also we styled all of these with one pair of shoes. But again, add trainers, add boots, add a hat, you know, add a scarf, whatever. Yeah. There are so many different ways to make it feel different. So you don't just feel like, yeah. well, I've got the same outfit on repeat. What inspiration? I mean, if we're thinking about autumn, winter now and you don't want to get sort of too stuck down it, just think of what those five key pieces could be and how you can sell them. Um, as always, everything will be linked below. And up next, we are talking skincare and all the advice you need to know. Hello and welcome to the pink house. Come on in, let me show you around. Rifle through any pro's beauty kit and chances are you'll find plenty of Omoravitsa there and good with good reason. Full of powerful antioxidants, the range offers anti-aging benefits thanks to the Hungarian thermal waters used in their formulas. Thrilled to welcome the brand's founder, Margaret de Heinrich de Omoravitsa, here to tell us all about new launches and the products. I'm welcome so excited here. to be here. I feel like we could talk forever and I could hang out. Forever in this amazing studio. Yeah, we we already have covered a lot, haven't we? So we better we better tell everyone what we've been talking about. So tell us a bit about the products, why you came up with the brand, um, what started it all. It was really uh, wonderful uh, circumstances, wonderful coincidences. I was in Budapest. I was stationed there as a Budapest as a, um, a diplomat, and I met my wonderful husband Stephen, who is Hungarian, and he really introduced me to these special mineral-rich baths. And, um, and told me about the history, how they were discovered 2,000 years ago, and, um, and more importantly, really experienced such a transformation to my much troubled skin. Okay, so what is it about 
the thermal waters in Hungary? That, what do they do? What are their oh, properties? Oh, gosh. It is, um, it, well, it's such a uh, very special, memorable experience going to them. Mm -hmm. um, you feel so, you have such vitality after experiencing them. But the minerals themselves, dozens and dozens of different types of minerals, really stimulate elasticity and collagen in the skin. Okay, and you were telling yeah. me before that the Hungarians have like a really different approach to skincare. They have a total different, uh, yeah, because uh, you know I had trouble with my skin from 13 onwards mm -hmm. and never had a facial. Um, was given Accutane and very severe uh, prescriptions, whereas in Hungary at 13, my oldest child is 13 and now really starting to suffer, um, and you get facials. And so the facialists all have uh, you know, lots of experience, three years of education, and that education is passed on to um, their clients. And so my education started in my late 20s, but my approach, my knowledge, my understanding of why my skin was behaving and what I could do to treat it totally changed. Okay, so you took the products from the thermal baths and you took them to an amazing we were so scientist, lucky. right? Yeah. We were so lucky. So through my work as a diplomat, I was um, working in healthcare and I met the laboratory of dermatology that is famous for having discovered vitamin C. No biggie. No sure. biggie, yeah, <laughs> as you do, and winning a Nobel Prize for wow. that. And um, you know, long story short, effectively, they said that um, it was very difficult, challenging to put minerals in topical skin care because mm -hmm. of their composition. And so it was really my husband, Stephen, who was our co-founder, who had um, this uh, you know, moment, this, uh, this vision of, of how this could happen, collaborating with the laboratory to patent a way to change the composition of these minerals mm -hmm. in topical skin, skin care, and we patented it. Gosh. And that's in every one of our products, so it was so exciting. So it's real science behind real it fun. all, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the range. Okay. Tell me, wh where should we start? Which, which are your favorites? Oh, gosh, it's so difficult. Um, much like uh, our four children, it's difficult <laughs> to choose just one. But um, all babies. All babies. Yeah. Well, I, these are the ones that we're just launching now, right. which is so exciting. Um, we treat minerals in a very special way. As I mentioned, we change the cellular composition. And um, silver is something we've been inspired by. It's mm -hmm. a noble mineral. And so we've changed the cellular composition of, of uh, silver as well to make it very bioavailable for the skin. Mm -hmm. And silver has such rich heritage. Uh, you know, in, um, it's very antibacterial. Mm -hmm. And in short, I could tell you the, the history, which is, you know, we could go on and on, yeah. but what does it do? Mm. It um, is antibacterial. It's fantastic for skin sensitivity if mm -hmm. you have adult acne. I think the challenge for me as I get a little bit older, mm -hmm. is I, um, I, I need a lot of different tools okay. to fight dryness, to mm -hmm. fight um, wrinkles, to fight adult um, acne, to fight a little bit of redness and sensitivity. But so many people have complex skin as well. It's it not only true. about anti-aging, yeah, yeah, I think so. And so this is just something, um, uh, something further in one's arsenal. Mm -hmm. And so um, silver, very antibacterial, also stimulates the elastin and collagen in the mm -hmm. skin, um, helps with clarity. And so this is an essence, okay. which is um, a mildly acidic, which helps uh, stimulate the skin and uh, bring that clarity. Mm -hmm. um, that control oil. And we've got a new gorgeous um, uh, moisturizer. This one? Yes, which is okay. divine. The packaging um, is beautiful. Oh, thank well. you. So it's very smart. We have so much fun with this packaging, I, I have to yeah. say. And the fragrance, which we work with a gorgeous perfumer in the south of France oh, that does a, you know, these beautiful things. Yes. And so, um, and the um, Silver Skin Savior, which so is this, a I rock this. star. It's amazing. This, this is it's a, a mask, mask, right? I it's use a mask. It as a mask, yeah. And I actually had a break, an, an adult breakout this week. And yeah. yeah, I use it. We'll talk about this in a minute. But I use your, your cleanser and then this. And oh, it's, good. It really helps. It really oh, helps. Thank and you. And I love it. It's cooling and it's, it sits so, it's so soft on the skin, isn't it? It is. And also, you know, I find, again, with dryness and um, with you uh, getting a little fine lines, it just absolutely clarifies and smooths the skin. Mm -hmm. So it looks better under makeup. Um, and again, you have that brightness, that glow. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. Oh, I've just seen we've got a little tester. Should we help? Should we get some out so people can see? There okay. we go. It's as gorgeous, it almost face, pearlescent. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. pearlescent like that, isn't it? Gosh. I love oh, it's, it. It, it smells, smells amazing. Oh, I, it we, smells like a spa. It, you know, it is. It's yeah. so refreshing. Yeah. Lovely. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Sorry, not very attractive, yeah. I'll leave it like that. Oh, I love um, it, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the silver range, and that is, that's out now? It's out now, just, I think, earlier this week. Yeah. Great. Okay, and then let's talk about these. These are some core products as well? Core products. So um, Budapest, one of the reasons that these thermal waters are so unique and special is Budapest is a complete geological curiosity. The Earth's crust is thinner in Budapest than any other place in the world. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then there are other geological curiosities all over the country, and one of them is the largest active thermal lake in the world. Okay. And that's where we get our mud. And so the mud is really special, mm -hmm. and this is one of our most popular products. It's our thermal cleansing balm. Also a big fan of. I, yeah. I absolutely love it. It is, um, it's black because it uses mud from, the, um, from this wonderful lake. The lake renews itself naturally every 24 hours, That's which amazing. makes it even more potent. Mm. And again, bottom line, Oops. what does it do? Hello. <laughs> is um, it removes Dior Show waterproof mascara, smells no of mean orange feet. blossom. Yeah. yeah, no mean feet. And one of the myths I had when I moved um, to Hungary, and even being a huge beauty enthusiast, I didn't know all the details, mm -hmm. is because my skin was so oily, um, it was a real combination, and I had breakouts, I always thought, my goodness, don't use anything with oil. But of course, oil, and this has sweet almond oil, mm -hmm. Uh, dissolves oil and it's so great to regulate yes. the uh, moisture balance in the skin. So you can only really fight oil with oil, right? It's a wonderful, again, a, a wonderful to tool yeah. in the toolkit. Again, yeah. I use this. I have to say, it's not very, I'm not very good on beauty, so it's not often that somebody comes on and I'm oh. like, I use this and I use this, oh, but I can, you. I honestly, this is, I love it. It breaks down into the most amazing oily, again, it just feels so luxurious, doesn't it? It's like a science project yeah. too, isn't it? It's yes. black and then it takes everything and then you shine and yes. beautiful, smooth skin. You Feels yeah. so clean oh, after thank it, don't you? you? I love it. Lovely. Um, anything you. else you want to highlight from this? From oh this my range? gosh, I could talk forever. <laughs> um, but just maybe a couple things. Mm. Um, this is our rejuvenating night cream, mm -hmm. which I absolutely adore. Um, and um, a wonderful uh, that to use in the evening, and I mix it. Um, this is another one of my favorite products, our Miracle Facial Oil. I bet that smells amazing. It smells That's amazing. Good. It okay. smells of mimosa. Ooh, lovely. And I've got two beautiful mimosa trees right outside my kitchen, and I absolutely... Oh, that smells so amazing. Doesn't it smell yes. lovely? You yeah. could basically give yourself a facial at home without feeling... All the time. Yeah, All the lovely. Time. Yeah. Okay, so you use them together? I use them together, okay. yeah. And then we have um, our Blue Diamond range, mm -hmm. which is also divine. And that is all about skin fitness, about increasing the vitality in the skin. Here we go. So what do you do with it? Um, so effectively, uh, this is our um, moisturizer. Mm -hmm. And you first put the um, Blue Diamond Concentrate, which is a serum. Okay. And it is about um, the grafting peptides mm -hmm. onto a diamond. Um, which is a great uh, delivery system. Okay. And that penetrates the skin and it works on a cellular level. Yeah. And what's genius about it is it awaken sleeping cells because mm -hmm. as you get older, you start to, your skin cells start to fall asleep a touch. Okay. And you have to waken those up. Yeah. And, um, and this is activating that um, vitality. And we, these are divine. We use these, we do a lot of fashion shows. Okay. And, this, and we sponsor the ballet. Um, and the British Film Institute, and this is used on film sets and also a lot backstage because it's so quick. Fab, okay, good to know. Um, okay, so if you were to recommend one product for anti-aging. For anti-aging, the Blue Diamond Concentrate. Okay, definitely that's the one. Quick, And yeah. problem skin spots? Um, the uh, Silver Skin line, I'd say, yes. yeah. I'm gonna keep going on that. Um, okay, you also don't use any nasties in we don't, any of your yeah. products. So tell me a bit about that. Well, I think when Steve and I started dreaming about this in Budapest um, many moons ago, we really had a, um, an idea that luxury is about a point of view. Mm -hmm. And you're never going to be all things to all people. But the best instances of luxury is when there is authenticity. Mm -hmm. And so we really set up to build our lives around this, but also have it an extension of how we lead our lives. And so it was quite natural for us to want to exclude all these synthetic ingredients, not only because that's how we live our life, but also because there's so much innovation. Mm -hmm. And um, and just on um, you know on on principle, but also on um, on lifestyle, we uh, excluded them. And it's never held us back, I'm delighted to say. Yeah, well, you can tell it's, it's certainly oh, a lovely range, range. Finally, is there anything else coming up for the brand that you're excited about? Oh my goodness, there's so many exciting things. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we're just trying to keep up with everything and just having a good time and, and have wonderful colleagues and, um, and uh, lots of smiles. Good. Well, seems you're doing all right so far. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining Thank us. You. Thank um, you. As usual, everything will, of course, be linked in the products uh, in the show notes below. The products will be linked in the show notes below. Cool. Um, as thank you so much to all our guests today. Uh, we'll be back next week with more fashion, food, and beauty. Until then, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. Bye bye.